Hi guys, oh, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Donna and today's video is going to be a little different than what I usually do. This video is going to be all about that special man in your life, whether it's your husband, boyfriend, dad, brother, grandfather, you get the picture. So I'm basically going to be comparing three different dress shoes at three different price ranges. So we have shoes at 150 Canadian dollars, shoes at 500 dollars and shoes at 1,300 dollars. And by comparing these, I'm going to try to determine what really explains the huge difference in price between the three different pairs, as well as is it really worth it or not. So without further ado, let's get started. So for this video, I chose to compare three pairs of black cap toe dress shoes for a multitude of reasons. Firstly, yes, I think every man deserves to have or should have a pair of dress shoes in their collection. And two, yes, they should be cap toe shoes. And cap toe just means that there's this extra piece of material at the toes to form like a cap. And cap toes are probably the best selling men's shoes in the dress shoe category. So they're definitely classic and they're not going out of style. And if you think about it, every shoemaker kind of has a classic pair of cap toe black dress shoes in their, in their shoe collection. So that's why I kind of chose to go for the black cap toe dress shoe. So now that I've convinced you all to get a pair of, of cap toe shoes for that special man in your life, let's see what's out there on the market. So before I begin with the comparison, I would just like to say that each pair of these shoes does represent a good quality or a good value for their respective price points. So the three different pairs I do have for you guys today, the first pair is a pair of black Calvin Kleins and these are 140 dollars the second pair is a pair of hugo bosses at around 500 dollars retail price and the third pair are a pair of christian louboutins at obviously 1300 dollars so let's start with the least expensive the calvin kleins i'm just going to start by saying that these are very easily available you can they're easy to find in store and they are available in a wide range of sizes they are not made in Italy, however, or in any country that is re renowned for their shoemaking. They are, if I'm not mistaken, they are made in China. And if we do start by looking at the soles of the shoes, you can see very easily that, they are, that they're not made in leather. They're actually made in rubber. And usually as the price goes up, dress shoes, the sole is fully leather. That's not the case with these shoes, however. Usually when the sole is made in leather, the upper part of the shoe is sewn onto the sole. I'm not sure, I don't think that's the case with this particular shoe, especially at this price. And usually it is sewn onto the sole just because the sole of the shoe is the first to get ruined and kind of scuffed. So by, by it being sewn, sewn on, if you take it to a shoe cobbler or shoemaker, they can easily remove the sole and replace it. Now at this price, if it's not sewn on and your sole gets ruined, it's not a big deal. You wouldn't feel bad just replacing them. Now the upper is made in genuine leather, however. The only thing is, at this particular price point, the issue with these type of shoes is that with time, the color, the black dye may come off. I don't know if this is necessarily the case for this exact pair. However, it is something to look out for when you're looking for dress shoes at this price point. What I will say though, what's very nice about this Calvin Klein shoe is that the stitching is all double stitched. It kind of adds a little more sophistication. The shoe is a little bit more elevated. I don't know if you can see that in the camera, but everything is double stitched, which is very nice. So all in all, for the price you are paying for these shoes or this pair of shoes, you are getting a very good shoe for that price point. Now let's move on to the second pair of shoes. For our mid price range, we have these Hugo Boss black dress shoes. Now these go for around $475 Canadian retail new from store. And what I really love about this particular pair is the leather they are made of. It's kind of like a textured canvasy leather as you can see, almost like a type of Safiano leather and you all know how I feel about Safiano. This type of textured leather really does make the shoe more durable. So it will last long in time. 
So if we do a quick side by side, you can already tell just by looking at it at first glance that there is a difference in terms of finesse and finishing between both shoes. So this sole is not leather either. It is in like a rubbery material to increase comfort. However, although it is in rubber, when you do compare the two, you can already tell that this one is more detailed. There's more finishing to it. You have this little kind of texture at the top. You can see there is like two layers to the heel. Whereas the Calvin Klein, I mean, it's just less, there's less detail. The finishing is a little bit more, I don't want to say rough, but it's, it's not as fine as the Hugo Boss. So if we take a look at the sole, you can already see that it is stitched to the upper. And this is exactly what I was talking to you about before. So if ever the sole does get used, which is possible with wear, you can easily take this to a shoe cobbler and they can remove the sole and replace it. So one of the major differences between this shoe and the Calvin Klein I just showed you is that the stitching, although it is not double stitched, it's single stitched, there is more stitches. So like there's a higher stitch density, what they call, and this just adds to the finesse and finishing. It makes the shoe look more dainty, more refined. So I'm just gonna show you. And in general, as the price of a shoe increases, especially men's shoes, the stitch density does increase as well. This is the Calvin Klein stitch density. So you can see there are not as many stitches and they are kind of like longer in length compared to the Hugo Boss. What you can also see when you do compare to the Calvin Klein is that the Hugo Boss, or the more expensive shoe in general, does have more shape to it. And that just comes with the technique used to make more expensive or pricier shoes. So it's hard to see on camera, but in real life you would see that this curve, it curves a little bit more in the side of the shoe. If you kind of look at it like that, this one will go more in as opposed to the, the Calvin Klein which is a little bit more straight when you do look at it from the side. And this goes without saying, but usually when you do pay more, the leather is better quality and you can kind of see that just by looking at the different shoes. The leather on the Hugo Boss is just finer and less plasticky looking, if that makes any sense, compared to the Calvin. So now let's look at our third and final pair, and that is the most expensive pair, the Christian Louboutins at $1,300. So this one is in full leather. I mean, the laces are leather, the upper is leather, the sole is leather, everything on this shoe is leather, basically. And if we take a look at the sole, yes, we have that famous red sole, but you can see it's finished in like a red lacquer, but it's very, and very smooth. You cannot see the stitches on this, but that's just because what they usually do with this type of shoe is they kind of slice the, the sole, they sew the upper onto the sole of the shoe, and then they kind of like glue it back together and finish it off with this like lacquer or whatever finishing they use depending on the, the brand or fashion house. And this usually just gives this smooth, dainty finish like this. If we compare the Louboutins to the Hugo Boss, the stitch density is even greater on this shoe. If you look, they're tiny, tiny stitches. There's many of them and they're very short in length. And like I did mention before, it just makes for a sleeker, cleaner look to the shoe. And as the price of the men's shoe does increase, there is more finishing. So the, the leather is shinier, it's more lustrous. The sole, you do see the nails used to attach the sole to the, the upper. As well, if you do compare the back of the shoe, the heel is kind of smaller and it fits tighter onto the body. If I just like compare it the side by side to the Calvin Klein's, you can immediately see that difference. How the, just the heel of the Louboutin fits better onto the, the shoe as opposed to this one. And now, with very pricey men's shoes, there is something, what they call a fiddleback. 
and what I'm referring to is this piece here in the center it kind of like elevates and then goes back down it's like a kind of pointed tip and you have this with the pricier dress shoes for men as well the what we call the waist which is this part here is thinner on pricier shoes like let's say the Louboutins compared to the the Calvin Klein's now this does not affect how the shoe wears at all it's just a mark of finesse and quality you get this kind of what they call fiddleback and thin waist just with the techniques they use to put the shoe together and if I show you the heel of the shoe it's also detailed kind of like the Hugo Boss ones and what you do have to remember when you're going for a shoe that's a thousand dollars and upwards in the men's dress category you are also kind of paying for the the heritage of the brand or the name so you do have to keep that in mind so as for the answer to the question which pair of shoes offers the best quality price ratio well i'll leave that up to you but what it all comes down to is your budget and how much you're willing to spend on a pair of dress shoes for that special man in your life it all depends i mean if your man's someone who dresses up wears a lot of suits goes to work in suits every day then maybe it's well worth spending a little extra on a pair of Louboutins or Hugo Bosses. But if your man is not someone to dress up and occasionally needs a pair of just shoes for whatever event or reason, then maybe I wouldn't spend a thousand upwards on a pair of shoes for him. Anyway, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed my video. If you did, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Leave all your questions, comments in the description box below. And if you do like my channel, you like what you see, please don't forget to subscribe. It really does help the channel grow and turn on that notification bell to be notified anytime I upload a new video. Bye guys.